Uh, now this video is going to cover how do you do hatches. So hatches are a great way, for instance, to add textures, uh, to denote different materials, to uh, distinguish between your building and your neighbor's building, things like that, uh, to show where the ground is, obviously. Um, so hatch patterns are something you can use to add, add layers of information to your drawing. For instance, I'm going to try, first of all, to hatch all my walls here. You can see the red outline represents where the solid walls are. I'm going to select all the lines at the same time. I'm going to type in uh, hatch. And uh, I think I have an option selected where it's going to allow me to, to click in each one. But if you saw a solid fill like that, it automatically just filled everything. One thing you can do is you can, once you see this window, hatch window pop up, you can click boundary. And so that allows me to go in here and actually click kind of just like a paint bucket tool or something like that. I did that wrong. You can click to deselect as well. And I can just fill in the parts that I would want to fill in. Where I have solid walls. Like so, press enter. So you can, it's, it's not bad practice to put your own, um, put a new layer for hatches. I'm just going to choose a solid fill, but if you wanted to like do, I'll choose solid fill for now. Solid fill, there we go. Now to select what I just did, I can either type in select hatch, and that'll select all the hatches in my file. Right now those are the only ones I think. Or I can type in uh, select last, which just selects whatever happened in the previous command. Now, like I said, I think it's a good idea to have it have a layer for hatches. So I'll just make a new layer there, call it hatch. I'll change it to that layer. And just like before, I want to ensure that I have uh, I'll change it yellow or something. I want to ensure that I have the print properties set up. Now, it's also important to set a line weight for this. I'm going to choose 0.13 because, for instance, I'm going to make a little ground plane here. That will probably be cut off, so don't pay too close attention. So, sorry, hatch. I could fill in the ground there. Let's say, for instance, in my section, I'm denoting like my neighbor's wall, and I want to put that as a different hatch. I can fill it in. And then I can choose a different hatch style. There's a bunch of default ones that are preloaded. But hatch one is just a series of lines spaced apart. I can change the rotation, 45 degrees. I can change the scale, to five, so they're much bigger. Click OK. Now what's going to happen when I go to my layout here, a couple things. One thing, just like with the dimensions, just like with the um, text and line types, there's a scale to this, right? So you can see those lines are way too far apart now in my actual layout. So when I set the scale of the hatch pattern, uh, I want to do it for my layout. There you can see. I have them much closer to what I want, probably even closer as I can actually want. Um, but in my model space, they're way too close together. And I can change the scale of that as well. Options, hatch, model space, hatch scale. So with other things, I can set that to a number that will scale it up in model space so I can see it better. Um, so, setting up hatches between layouts. Oops, that's the scale there. No, I didn't. All right. Um, so, that'll allow me to see it better and set it up between layouts and between model space. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is you can see that the default hatches in Rhino are not particularly comprehensive. So, what happens if you want to download a hatch pattern and add it to your file? I can go over to my internet browser and search for hatch patterns. You can also type like free hatch patterns. There's all these free websites. Just, you know, stay away from the extra sketchy ones. Um, and let's go, back. let's go home on this. So we're looking for, yeah, stone or brick. Brick looks pretty good. Couple options. I'm just going to use this one so I don't get too many lines there. And so it's downloaded. And uh, over in my downloads, 
I'll extract that. So yeah, if it comes in an archive file like a zip, make sure you extract it. Did that work? I'm not sure. There it is. Okay. So hatch patterns come in the form of a .pat pattern file. And to import that hatch pattern to my Rhino file, I'll type in options. And under hatch, click import. And I'll go to downloads where I just extracted that on pattern. Now, sometimes hatch patterns come in really crazy scales. That's OK. I can't actually see what the hatch pattern is, but believe me, it's there. OK, click OK. Now, let's say I wanted to hatch my elevation. Hatch. Um, so just like before, I can use that boundary option to kind of like fill in uh, what I want. And I think the brick doesn't go all the way down this building actually, but do it all the way for now because I don't have that drawn. Okay, so those are all the things I want to fill with my hatch pattern. Click OK. And under this um, menu now I should see that one I just imported. Again, click OK. I don't know if it's way too big or way too small. Let's, I think maybe it's way too big. Let's try like 0.1. I'm going to set this to zero as well. Yeah, so it's way too big. You can see I barely have any lines showing there. 0 0.05. Click OK. Uh, 0.01. That's just getting there. 0 0.005. And 0 0.01. And there is a kind of minimum here. And so if that happens, there we go. Getting closer. Um, but if that happens, you can, you might have to search for a different one. Oops, where's my hat? The fat. So we can start to make that a little smaller. Now, once again, I put that on the wrong layer. Go my hatch layer. And the reason it matters what line weights you apply to your hatch layer, of course, is that that's what it's going to print at on your page. So you can see that's a quick, easy way to add that material. But when I change the line weight, it's going to change how thick those lines are on that layer that I have it assigned to. Okay. Should not. OK, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, am I changing the wrong, changing the wrong thing? My bad. All right, change not the one that's for layout properties, change the one that's for uh, the layer properties. Which is at 0.5. Yeah, you can see that's really thick. It does not look good. Anyway, so just so you know, hatches that our lines have a line weight too. You can also change that to like a gray if you wanted to make it recede even more graphically, etc. All right. <clears throat> um, I think that basically covers hatches. Uh, there is one other thing, actually, which relates to, I select that hatch, select, and you can group this too, so it's easier to select over and over again, but select that hatch, and uh, so in here you can also, you can kind of measure it if you wanted to, to just make sure it's the scale you want. Obviously, this brick pattern is too big. You would want to actually measure it on your... Uh, See, it's a lot finer on the actual drawing. So you'd want to measure it over here in model space if you wanted to actually check that it's close to the right dimension. Um, but what I'm what I'm also interested in is you see how all the bricks are starting at a weird point right there. Or like let's say if I had this didn't have this grouped, uh, let's say I change this. So you can change where the pattern starts. This is what I'm getting at. 
So if you select a hatch and you go over here where it says base point, if I click on the little three dots, I can reset the hatch. You start at a certain place. And if I use the outside boundary of like a wall or something, I can make the seams all line up. And of course, the other thing that's happened now is like this brick hatch pattern doesn't line up with that one. Um, so I can also select a hatch pattern. And I can select match. I'll click on match. Let's say it's like a different scale, a different rotation, a different uh, base point. So when I click match and then choose a reference one, uh, it should line me up. Did it line me up? I'm not sure it did. Okay, maybe I'm wrong about that. It's so hard to tell because, of course, they put it in yellow. Okay, so select that one. Let's say this is a different scale now. Let's try 0.01 a lot bigger. So if I want this brick pattern, hatch pattern to match that one, select it, hit match, click on the one you wanted to match. So it doesn't reset the base point. That's good to know. Um, and in order to do that, you would have to just hit those three dots next to where it says base point and uh, try and use the same one. Right. Match. And then one of those all to line up. Click layer. And click base point with all of them selected. And that way they'll all be lined up. Shouldn't use that as my base point though. I should use that. Great. All right, so that's how to set up and add hatches, um, scale them, make sure they're lined up, etc.